just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your amazing love. Thank that you, Lord. love that love mankind, love your creation thank so you, much, Father, that you sent your son Jesus. And your son Jesus gave his life for us. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that he gave his life and we may have God. life. And we thank you for life this morning. We thank you, Father, for all your wonderful blessings. Your blessing of being in your house, being in your presence this morning. And we thank you for your anointing that destroys every yoke, your anointing that removes every burden. And Father, I thank you for ministering to your people this morning. Minister to the hearts, the minds, and the bodies, Father, of all your people, Father. Every word, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. lift up every bow down to Him. Yes. Make every sad heart glad this morning, yes. Father. Provide every need this morning, Father. Yes. And we just thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for sending your word this morning. Send your word to heal. Send your word to deliver, Father, yes, in Lord. the name of Jesus. Make it so plain that a thing can die in the cross. Feed your people this morning, yes, Father. People, Lord. Give us just what we need this morning, yes, Father. Yes. Sometimes we think we know what we need, Father, but you really know what yes, we need. Yes, and give us this morning, just what we need, Father. Give us our daily bread. Yes. Yes. Lord, we thank you for that bread from heaven. That bread that feeds every soul this morning. Thank you. And Lord, we just thank you for the eyes of our thank heart you, and life. That we may know what is the hope of your calling in Christ Jesus. Jesus. And Lord, we give you the praise, give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. If you happen to have a Bible this morning, we're going to ask that you would turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 26, and also Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24 and 25. 1 Corinthians 14. And this morning, we will be talking to you about coming together. Coming together. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. Amen. We thank God this morning thank for Lord. being here. We thank God for each one of you, whether you're here or whether you're watching over the internet. If you are watching over the internet, we thank God that you're watching. But we'd rather for you to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. When you have it, let's say amen. amen. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. And it reads, How is it these brethren? When ye come together, every one of you has a song, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation has an interpretation that everything be done unto edify and Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24 and verse 25 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and verse 25 when you have it let's say amen Hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and verse 25 and it reads, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the man of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You may be seated and thank you for standing. So we're talking about coming together. And first of all, I'm going to talk about coming together from a natural point of view. And for those of you who are watching over the internet, or maybe you may be even here in the sanctuary, but you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. 
You don't know what me the part of you to see. You don't know God in a personal way. You have not received the peace of God. And you don't know where you go if you die this morning. And I want to talk to you this morning first. How it's important when we say coming together is that first we have to come together with God. We have to meet God. And together means to be in union with. It means to be in contact with. It means to be in the company of. It means to be associated with. Uh, it means to be conjoined with. Be joined together. So, first of all, we need to meet with God. We need to get together with God. We need to come together with God. We need to be in the company of God. We need to be in union with God. And we can only be in union with God through Jesus Christ. And in John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we can only be in union, or we can really only come together with God as first through Jesus Christ. And realizing that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. And he lived, and he is God. But he became a man and came into the earth through Mary. And he grew up. And at the age of 30, he was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And he began his ministry. He began to preach and to teach and to let us know who God is. Let us know what God was really like. He began to heal the sick. He began to cleanse the leper. He began to raise the dead. And one day at Calvary, they crucified him. But really, it wasn't them that killed him. He gave his life. He gave his life for me and for you. And the reason he died, he died for me. He died for you. He died for our sin. He died because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He died because Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. When God told them not to eat of the true tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because Adam and Eve disobeyed God, sin entered into the world. Sin entered into Adam and Eve. It entered into the bloodstream. And sin was passed down to every person that was born into this earth. So that every person was, that was been born into this earth was born in sin, except for one. And in Psalms 51, 51 David said, I was born in sin and shaped in, in, in iniquity. And all of us was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Jesus Christ is the only one who was not born into sin because he got his blood from God. Mary was his mother, but God was his father. And so Jesus, being a man without sin, and a man who never sinned, he died not because he needed to die, but he died for me and for you. And not only did he die for me and for you, he died in our place. Because the penalty of sin is death. So we all deserve to die. We all were born in sin, shaken in liberty, and we all deserve to die. But I am so glad that Jesus died for me. So that I don't have to die the death of sin. Jesus died that death for me. And because of him, I can live. And so that is the first coming together. When you come together with Jesus, 
realize that Jesus paid the price. And not only did he die, but he rose again on the third day. And the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 10 that if we will confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. Because it is with the heart that we believe and it is with the mouth that we confess unto salvation. And so when we put our trust in what Jesus did at Calvary, then we enter from death unto life. That we come out from under the power of Satan and we are translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. And so this is our first coming together. You first have to come together with God. You first got to meet with God. And the only way that you can come together with God is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And if you haven't received Jesus Christ this morning, I beseech you to receive him this morning. And all you have to do is to realize who Jesus is. Realize what Jesus did for you. Realize that he died so that you can have fellowship with God. He died so that you can meet with God. He died so that you can know God this morning. And if you realize that, the scripture says that if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And I'm so glad that he didn't stay dead. That when he paid the penalty for my sin and for your sin, God raised him up. And because God raised him up and gave him life, it is in him that I live, move, and have my being. I have life in him. So if you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior this morning, as your boss this morning, then you can believe with God. You can have peace with God. You have peace with God. If you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, you have peace with God. So this morning, you are meeting with God. You are together with God. But when we're talking about coming together this morning, not only are we talking about coming together with God, we're talking about coming together with God's people. And so God has provided us with a place, a place to meet with him and to meet with his people. And so in Hebrews chapter 10, a lot of us are familiar with what it says. It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So that means that we are to encourage one another to love. And this is God's commandment to us, that we love one another, just like Jesus loved us. And it's by this commandment that all people would know that we are Jesus' disciples when we love. So we are out to encourage one another to love. Love each other. Love your enemies. Love those that despitefully use you. Love unconditional. And provoke to good works. So we ought to do good. We do good not to get saved, but we do good because we are saved. We do good because we love. We're not doing good to get to heaven. To get to heaven, we believe on Jesus. But we do good works because we love. So out of love, do good works. We're not doing good works to get God to do something for us. Right. For us. Right. But we're doing good works because we love. Because God has placed his love in our hearts. And so we want to encourage and we want to see other people do good works. And we want to encourage you this morning to do good works. Not to, so that God can do your favor. Not so you can get to heaven. But because you love. And God is love. 
So we are to promote one another to love and to do good works. And then it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. In other words, don't fail to, to assemble yourself together. Always come together with other believers. And we ought to be excited about coming together Amen. with other believers. The last sentence of our declaration this morning. Anybody remember the last sentence? The last sentence of our declaration is I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And that's found in Psalm 124. How many are glad this morning? Amen. How many got excited this morning about coming to the house of God? Amen. You were excited about coming and meeting the people of God. And so that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be excited about coming together. And the reason why we can be excited is because there is something that happens when we come together. And see, we have to realize that there's something that happens when we come together. How many get encouraged when you come together? Yes. Yes. And see, you may be watching over the internet this morning, but watching over the internet is not like being here in the sanctuary. Amen. Being here where you can physically touch your brother and your sister. Being here where you can see every smile and face this morning. Every face that has the anointing of Jesus Christ on it this morning. There is something special when we come together. Amen. There is something special when we gather together in his name. In Matthew chapter 18 and it tells us that wherever we bind on earth will be bound uh, in heaven. Wherever we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And then it tells us that uh, uh, wherever two of where we ask in Jesus' name and two or three of us agree that's touching anything, it will be done by our Father. It said, for where two or three are gathered together, Jesus is up there. So guess what? Jesus is here this morning. Amen. How many know Jesus is here this morning? Yes. And so there is something special when we come together and say we know that Jesus is here. Jesus is here and he desired to express himself. Jesus just don't want to be here. You know, Jesus could be here and you not know he's here. Jesus could be here and you know he's here. But to you, you don't see Jesus do anything. You see, Jesus does something when we come together. And we have to know that. We have to anticipate. It's more than we come coming together and Jesus being here. But it's Jesus expressing himself through his body. You see, Jesus is the head of his body. And this body that we're talking about is the church. The church is the body of Christ. And Jesus is the head and we are his body. So the head communicates to the body and the head tells the body what to do. So I'm moving my hand because my head tells my hand to move. So it is in the body of Christ. Jesus the head tells the body what to do. So when the body comes together, Jesus moves. He moves in his body. And so this is something that we have to anticipate. This is something that we have to really be encouraged about, excited about. You see, it tells us uh, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the man of some evils, but exhorting one another 
and so much more as you see the day approach. You see, there's coming a day when we all get it out of here. The dead in Christ is going to rise first. And then we which will remain are going to be called up together to meet him in the air. And so if you're born again, you're going to be together with the saints. But I want to get together down here with the saints. And so God wants to break down every barrier that our flesh wants to set up. Our flesh wants to set up barriers of denomination. Barriers of race and culture. But in Christ, there is no Jew nor Gentile. There is no male nor female. But we all are one in Christ. And in Christ, every barrier is broken. And when we come together, we ought to see that barrier being broken. When we come together, there is no Baptist, Baptist, or Pentecostal. When we come together, there is no Jew or Gentile. But we all are one in Christ. And so our hearts and our minds should be free to that. When we come together, this is not just a natural coming together. You see, when we come together, it's different from any other coming together. You may have came together in your social club, the Rotary Club, and sometimes we want the Democrats to come together. We want the Republicans to come together. We want the Democrats and the Republicans to come together. We want the President and Congress come, to come together. We want the Congress and the Supreme Court to come together. That's good for, for them to come together. But see, when the church comes together, when God's coming, uh, people come together, it's different. Amen. You have to understand it's different. Because when we come together, it's supernatural. Supernatural is here this morning. You have to know that supernatural is here this morning. And supernatural is happening this morning. And so God wants us to experience the supernatural. And maybe you have never experienced the supernatural. And see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26, it says, How is it then, brother, when ye come together, every one of you has a song, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, it says, Let all things be done unto edify. So it says, when we come together, Somebody ought to have a song. A song is a hymn. It's a spiritual song. A song is a poetic song. So when you come together, be expected. Bring something. How many brought something this morning? So we are so used to and accustomed to our tradition. And most of you here, and probably a lot of you on the internet, well, this is our order of service. We got somebody to come up to read the scripture to pray, and then we're going to have a few songs, and then somebody going to preach and whatever. But God wants to break us out of our tradition, break us out of our box, because Jesus is alive. Amen. He's not dead. He's alive. Amen. And so, while we have order, we just don't have rope repetition. Jesus is not rope repetition. So, expect the Spirit of God to move in you. God may have a song that you, He wants you to sing. He may wake you up early in the morning. So now, when you come together with the saints on Sunday, this is the song I want you to sing. So when you come here, it's not just to look to hear the preacher preach. 
Bring some. When you come, bring some. Anybody bring something this morning? Uh, you said, no, I'm just going to hear the preacher preach. I'm just going to hear the praise team sing. But ask God for something. Ask God something that will edify, that will build up the church, that will build up together. Ask God for something that will encourage somebody. Ask God for something that will deliver somebody. Because if you are born again, you are a part of the body. And every part of the body has something to do. Now they say the appendix in your body, they say that's not good for anything. But if you ever talk to people who have their appendix taken out, they can tell you there's something different. That things just don't work right in certain areas in their body. Because God put the body together the way he wanted. But every part of the body has something to give. So you have something to give. Ask God what he wants you to give. Every time there is a gathering of the body, God, what do you have for me to give? He says, uh, when you come together, he has, one of you has a song. Another has a doctrine or a teaching. Another has a tongue. Another has a revelation. Another has an interpretation. So God may give you a teaching. Oh, I'm not qualified to teach. I don't know enough to teach. But just give you word study. That's God for something. But whatever God gives you, Expect God to give you something. Something that will edify the body. Something that will build up the body. And so God wants you to renew your mind. You just didn't come here today just to hear the preacher. To look at my face. <laughs> God gave you something. And if you don't present what you gave, then you are depriving the body of something. So understand, God wants to use you. There is no useless part in the body. Amen. God may give you a song. God may give you a teaching. God may give you a tongue. When someone said, well, I don't really believe in that stuff. It's real. A tongue means a language. Supernatural language. A language that's beyond your understanding. But then it also says God gives an interpretation. So one has a tongue, another has an interpretation. So tongues and interpretation should be a regular part of when we come together. And so maybe God gives you an interpretation. Maybe you're waiting on the tongue this morning. <laughs> but ask God to give you something. God has given you something. And he put that down in your belly, in your heart. John 7, 37 and 39 says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus came and stood and said, If any man thirst." Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, <clears throat> out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit that had not been yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But guess what? Jesus is glorified. And all of you this morning can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. How many have been baptized in the Holy Ghost? How many this morning speak in other tongues this morning? Amen. Maybe you pray in tongues. God wants you to pray in tongues. And God also wants to use you in a message in tongues. So 
So there is a prayer in tongues, and there was there is an encouragement of the edifying of the body in tongues. So you can pray in tongues at home, and when you get to church, maybe God will give you a tongue that will edify the body. And to edify the body, there needs to be an interpretation. But God has given somebody her tongue. And God has given somebody her an interpretation. And so the tongue doesn't work properly without the interpretation. Because it doesn't edify the body. And that's why we all come together. And that's a part of us coming together. Because each one of us has a part. And there's an old saying that the whole is greater than the part. Amen. So when we come together, it's greater than us being by ourselves. Amen. And see, that's the trick of the enemy, is to isolate you, yep. to get you by yourself. Come on. But God has set us in the body together. And so maybe you at home this morning or in your office or wherever, in your bedroom, in your living room, and maybe you're watching over the internet. And you say, well, that's not church. I went to church this morning. <laughs> but God wants you to come together with the body. Amen. So that you can experience all that God has for you. And so it says, let all things be done unto everybody. You see, God can edify you and can comfort you. But there's nothing like another person who's edifying you and comforting you. And so we need one another. God has designed us <coughs> to need one another. We need one another. You need us. We need you. And God has given everybody a gift. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul writes and said, I don't want you to be misinformed about spiritual things. And then he goes on and he lists, lists what's called the gifts of the Spirit. He said, to one is given the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, to another faith, to another healing, to another the gift of miracles, the working of miracles, to another tongues, to another interpretation of tongues, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. So God has given you a gift. So which one did he give you? You have one of them. But really, by yourself, you can't use your gift. So you need to come together with people in order to use your gift. Amen. Even if it's just singing. You know, you can you can sing, but if, if you know the only one to hear you singing, you know, <laughs> if you can sing, it would be nice for somebody else to hear you sing. Yes. Maybe you know the only one that's ever heard you sing. <laughs> it would be nice for somebody else to hear you sing. <laughs> somebody else to enjoy your singing. To somebody else to be encouraged by your singing. But if you see, if you by yourself, you can't use your gift. Can't use your gift by yourself. So if you're watching over the internet this morning, you need to come together with the body of Christ. And I know we are in a time that a lot of people are afraid to go to church. Uh, we heard COVID and other things are going on. So a lot of the people are just afraid to go to church. But God tells us not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together. So it's better to obey God than to obey man. It's better to obey God than to obey any of our fears. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. So we have to overcome our fears and do what God told us to do, which is come together with the body of Christ. Now, coming together is more than just natural. 
Coming together is spiritual. Coming together is supernatural. God wants to knit our hearts together in love. You know, it's hard to love if you by yourself. It's hard to love if there's nobody to love. And really, that's really, if you want to know why, why did God create man, you want to really know why God created you, God created you so he can help somebody to love you. That's why God created you. God created you so he can help somebody to love you. Because it's impossible to love if you ain't got nobody to love you. So if you're by yourself, it's really hard to love. So God wants us to come together. And loving is a process. It's a process of knowing one another. It's a process of trusting one another. It's a process of opening the door of our hearts to one another. And maybe you may be heard this morning. And the person that right beside you, the person that's in front of you, or the person behind you, maybe all you know about them is their name and their face. You don't know their favorite color, their favorite food. You don't know uh, what kind of hobbies they like. And see, all those things is a process of coming together. And so, this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to come together. But the first two things we have to do is first, come together with God. Because if we can't come together with God, we can't come together with one another. Then we have to come together physically in a place with other believers. And those walls could be broken down. Those walls that try to divide us. And sometimes we look at people and we judge people that we don't know simply because we haven't talked to them. They don't look right. And see, man looks on the outside, but God looks at the heart. Yes. Coming together is a process of getting to know one another's heart. The person next to you, the person in front of you, the person behind you, do you know their heart? Are you in the process of getting to know their heart? And this is what God wants us to do. Coming together is a process. But God is a supernatural God. And in this process, there is supernatural. You know, there is power in coming together. There is power in unity. In Genesis chapter 11, uh, when uh, after the flood and the people got the ark and uh, they began to multiply, Everybody spoke the same language. Everybody had one speech. And everybody was together. But God had told mankind to be fruitful, to multiply, and to replenish the earth. But they all wanted to stay right there in that one spot. And so they decided to build a tower that would reach heaven. And God said, if we don't do something about this, they're going to do it. Because they were together. And see, that's the power of being together. When you are together, there is nothing impossible for you. When the church comes together, there is nothing impossible for the church. But coming together is more than just being in a building. Come on. Yeah. 
And so understanding that coming together is getting to know your brother and your sister. Coming together is knowing what gifts your brother and your sister have. Do you know what gifts your brother and sister have? First of all, do you know what gifts you have? <laughs> so God wants us to come together. Because when we come together, there is nothing impossible for us. So in Acts chapter 2, it says that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And it says, and suddenly there was a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like a fire, and it sent upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. So, on the day of Pentecost, which was 50 days after Jesus had rose from the dead, Jesus spent 40 days teaching them about the kingdom of God. And he left and told them to go to Jerusalem. Don't do anything but wait. Wait in Jerusalem. They was to wait there. Jesus said that you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So that's all that Jesus told them. They were waiting in anticipation. What will this power be? This power, the purpose of this power was to be witness. So Jesus told them, don't you go witness. You wait. You wait and when you, when you receive this power, then you will feel witness. So he told them to wait. So 10 days after Jesus left, it said the day of Pentecost had fully come. And they were there in one place with one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. In other words, they spoke in different languages. And all the people who were visiting Jerusalem there heard them in their own language. And what they were speaking was the gospel. And so on that day, 3,000 people stood, they didn't understand what was going on. They thought they, thought they was drunk or something. Peter said it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. And nobody get drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. But this is that was spoken by the prophet Joel. That in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The old men shall have vision. Young, the old men shall dream, dream. The young men shall see vision. And so Peter said, this is death. And as Peter began to speak, 3,000 people got saved. 3,000 people received Jesus Christ. And so there was 120 in the upper room, plus these 3,000 people. Now, what was these 3,000 people doing? In verse Acts 2 and 41 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there was added unto them about 3,000 souls, and they continually steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things come and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house they eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. You see, when we come together, 
God adds to the church. Yes. When we come together, God adds to the church. Yes. And you see, these people came together. 3,000 people got saved. And they will continue in the apostles' doctrine. Apostles' doctrine means the word. You see, the New Testament had not been written. And so the only thing that they knew of what Jesus taught, the one who was closest to Jesus, the apostles who was closest to Jesus, who had walked with Jesus, who had touched Jesus, who had heard Jesus. And so they were listening to these men because they were closest to Jesus. They knew what Jesus said. So they were continually listening to these men's teaching. And they will continually in fellowship. And they will continually in breaking bread. Meaning they will eat food. And food is always a good way of getting people together. Everybody eats. <laughs> Everybody likes to eat. And they will continually in prayer. So they will continue in the apostles' doctrine, which is the word. They will continue in fellowship. They will continually eat together and they will continue praying together. So let's come together and get the word. Amen. Amen. We have Sunday school, Bible study at 9 30 every Sunday morning. Bible study at 7 o'clock every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So let's continue getting the word Amen. together. Yes. And then it says they will continue in fellowship together, getting to know one another. Do you know the person behind you or in front of you? Do you know the person's favorite movie? Or even if they like movies? So it is in this fellowship that we get to know one another. They will continue in breaking the bread. Do you know the person in, beside you, in front of you, behind you? Do you know that person's favorite food? So they were continually in bringing bread. They were continually in prayer. We have prayer every Friday, 8 o'clock, we have prayer. So God wants us together. Yeah. So that's all a part of coming together. Amen. So can we come together? And see, it says when they came together, it says, God added to the church. It says God gave the apostles great power. It says God gave uh, the apostles witness. It says every soul respected God. Signs and wonders. Supernatural help. Supernatural happens when we come together. Maybe you had not seen supernatural. And maybe because you hadn't came together. But when we come together, supernatural happens. How many want supernatural? Yeah. Yeah. Supernatural happens yeah. when we come together. So God wants us to come together. In Acts chapter 4, Verse 32 through 35, it says, And the multitudes of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things come, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that liked for any, as many as were possessed of land or houses, sold them, and brought the price of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distributed distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So great grace was upon the church. And God gave the apostles great power 
Dunamis to witness. God gave the apostles great power to witness of the resurrection. And it says, they had all things in common. You know what it means to have all things in common? That's the way the King James says. They had all things in common. That means nobody said, this is mine. Nobody said, this is mine. Because this belonged to everybody. Because we got everything in common. And see, it's breaking down those barriers and letting love abide. Because when you love, what, what I have belongs to you. And what you have belongs to, to me. And what we all have belongs to God. Hallelujah. That's love. Amen. And so, uh, and we can only have that kind of love when we come together. Because right now, guess what? We don't trust one another. I wouldn't trust you with that. Cost too much for me to trust you with that. But here, everybody sold what they had. And they distributed to everybody that was needed. And nobody was in need of anything. That's what happened when we come together. So coming together is a process. And that's why I titled it not being together, but coming together. Because we are in the process of coming together. How many wants to come together? Or how many make it, it sounds too scary to come together? I don't really know if I want things like that. I don't know if I want to be in a place where they speak in tongues. I don't know if I want to be in, in a place where everybody has what everybody else got. I want to have mine. <laughs> it's mine. And you can't have it. And I don't know if I can trust you with it. But it's letting down those walls. And I don't know why I don't trust you. I don't trust you because I don't know you. And why I don't know you? Because I haven't came together with you. So God wants us to come together. And that coming together is a process. And so uh, I invite each one of us to wherever the believers are meeting together to be excited about coming together. And when you come, to, come together, be ready to take off your mask. And so many times we wear a mask because I don't want you to see the real me. I don't want you to see what I really look like. Because if you really saw what I was like, would you really love me? <laughs> if you really saw I was, what I was like, would you really love me? But I'm so glad that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He chose to forgive us even before we ever sinned. God chose us. He said we were adopted God looked down and said, that's the one I want. When your feet was crooked and your eyes were crossed. <laughs> God said, that's the one I want. I want you. He knew all about you. He knew you better than you think you know yourself. And he chose you. And so, if we got the love of God, we can do the same thing. We can receive and accept people. And I'm so glad that I'm accepted in the beloved. Amen. And sometimes that's what people need more than anything else. 
they need to know that they are accepted. And I want to tell you that you are accepted. We receive you. Uh, you may not be walking straight yet, but we still receive you. We still love you. And the Holy Spirit working with it in you will straighten out the world. Philippians 1 to 6 says, He who begun the good work in us, he will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm so glad the Holy Spirit is working on me. How many glad the Holy Spirit is working on me? Yeah. So as we come together, allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, upon us, and through us. Amen. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. As you as you're in this building this morning, the Holy Spirit is working in you. The words that are being spoken right now is working something in you. It's working something out of you. As the people in this building love upon you, that rejection leads. And some of you have been rejected. People didn't receive you, they didn't accept you. But I want you to know that Jesus accepts you. He received you. We accept you to receive you. Amen. And I want you to know that you are loved. God loves you. Amen. I love you. The people of God love you. Yes. yes. And so that's why God wants you to come together. He said in Jeremiah with loving kindness of our drawn. And see, God is drawing you right now. God is drawing you to himself. And God is drawing you to his house. God is drawing you to other people so that you will be able to reach out and you will be able to embrace God's people. Embrace one another and not stand off from one another. You will be able to hug one another without I wonder why she's hugging me. I wonder why he's hugging me. And so God loved you without any exterior motives. Why did God love you? I don't know. He just loved me. And that's the way we need to be one another. I don't really need a reason to love you. I just love you. God bless you. Amen.